Dum, 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 dum. There's a stain on my garment, dear Aisha, dear Aisha. There's a stain on my garment, dear Aisha, a stain. Tell me how did it get there, Mohammed, Mohammed? Tell me how did it get there, Mohammed? Tell me. Sexy slave girls, dear Aisha, dear Aisha, dear Aisha. Sexy slave girls, dear Aisha. I just lost control. There's Maria Al Kuptia, Rayana Ben Sayed, Um Ayman and others. You know I can't wait. The Bilal's calling out son, Muhammad, Muhammad. Now it's time for the salad, Muhammad, it's time. Then scrape it, dear Aisha, dear Aisha, dear Aisha. Then scrape it, dear Aisha, dear Aisha, scrape it. Sahih Muslim 572-3377, Surah 66, Al-Bukhari 232, Surah 424. Is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And tonight we are going to talk about the one and many Qurans. I know sound is already confusing, but that's how Islam works. We will be asking basic questions on how many Qurans was were existed at the time of Muhammad Peace's police, FBI, and child protection be upon him. And those of you who are joining us, it's good to have you with us, um, especially brothers and sisters. Um, thank you very much for being with us, as well as um, extra welcome to those uh, of you who are guests or who are our friends so it's good to have you with us we are kind of trying to work in this new channel by god's grace hopefully things will work around well um those of you who are joining us new in this platform uh, let me just give you very basic principles how we kind of try to run the channel uh, as we we try to engage with you in the chat that means um, you are very much encouraged to um, write your comments on the topic which we are discussing. Uh, ideally, you don't want to kind of talk about something else. But if you really, really, really feel you are desperate to talk about something else, no one is putting gun on your head, you are just gently encouraged to stay on the topic which we are discussing. It is very important that you do not share anyone's personal details in the chat. Freedom of speech is very much encouraged, um, so feel free to practice that as well. Please do not use abusive language towards my guests. That's kind of only basic principle I have. Um, and also, please, please, and please do not abuse and harass the chat by copying the same message again and again. Do not copy and paste the same message again and again. It's not helpful to anyone. If you kind of decide that you want to push your boundaries, uh, in this, probably my moderators, I don't have many, but the ones who will be in the chat, they will probably time you out. And you don't want that. You don't want that. So um, 
as I said, it's good to have you uh, all brothers, sisters and friends and guests. Um, we are going to talk about uh, preservation of the Quran. We titled the live stream as the one and the many Qurans because it's just so confusing. <laughs> and we will try to figure out uh, what does Islam say about the preservation of the Quran. But tonight we especially want to focus on um, at the time of Muhammad, at the time of Muhammad, how many Qurans were there and how did Muhammad dealt with these different Qurans as well as how the companions dealt with these um, different Qurans. And of course, actually, let me introduce our guest tonight. We do have Jai Apologetics with us. Brother Jai is joining us from all the way from the different land. Um, um, he's going to help us to kind of talk through this topic tonight. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. How are you? Hey, Sister Atum. Peace of Christ be with you and with all of the viewers. Really happy to be with you today. This topic is one that comes up all the time for Muslims, and I'm just really excited to get into it with you. Good. Thank you very much for being available for us, brother. Um, would you be kind enough um, to introduce yourself? Because um, even though we have brothers and sisters and some friends, but we also have guests here who probably don't know you and probably they don't know who I am either. But uh, would you be kind enough and then just tell us who you are, what do you do and why are you kind of looking into Islam? Why did you end up in this live stream? <laughs> All right. Well, I where do I start? OK, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus saved me. And how did I end up talking about Islam? Uh, well, my main focus in ministry is dealing with rabbinic Judaism and Islam. I was introduced to a lot of ex-Muslims at one point in my life, and they started asking me questions, and we started researching things together. How do you answer this? How do you address that? And so it just kind of naturally formed this uh, kind of space for us to research these things together, and then we would try to evangelize and witness to uh, Muslims, their families, etc., together, and uh, yeah. So you and I, uh, we met uh, some time ago, and we got to, we joined forces together, and we've uh, been doing streams for a while now. So it's a little introduction. Okay, thank you. And would you be double kind and then just tell us what does Jai means? Okay, yeah, sure. So uh, people might pronounce it in different ways. You might hear Jai, J. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's just an acronym. It means Jesus always intercedes. It's uh, alluding to um, a passage in the Bible that uh, Jesus always makes intercession for us. Uh, and so that's that's where it comes from. Okay, thank you very much for being with us tonight um, or this afternoon, wherever people are joining us. So let me just actually bring something to our attention, which we picked up as... Um, we started the live stream. Um, it is such a shame that we live in 21st century where there is Sheikh Google, uh, where, it, where is Miss YouTube. Um, still, there are people around the world believes there is only one Quran. Haidar believes there is only one Quran. I am assuming he is <laughs> he's Muslim. I'm just very much disappointed in 21st century. There are people believe in such a lies. They've been lied by their imams, they've been lied by their sheikhs, they've been lied by their father and mother, and even their dawah gangs. So tonight, hopefully, um, some of the uh, Muslims will engage with us and then try to make sense of why there were many different Qurans at the time of Muhammad. And then in coming live streams, of course, we will be looking at why there are many different Qurans today um, and try to make sense of it. Uh, we keep this comment somewhere in here. Hopefully, hopefully we will remember to show this comment again and again. Yeah. I don't think I need to do much intro on the topic. It's been going around for a while. I am going to let some of the Muslim missionaries, some of the Muslim sheikhs, to simply summarize for us what is the claim they make about the Quran. Um, Brother Jai, did you want to jump in in anything before I um, show the short clip to people to remind what is the general claim about the Quran? Yeah, yeah. Just before we get into that, let's just address 
why this even comes up in the first place. Some there's actually some confusion about this. People think maybe we're making comparisons between how the Bible was preserved versus how the Quran was preserved, or what exactly we're doing. Why are we as a Christians interested in this topic at all? Why do we focus on this? Uh, well, we're going to see from the Muslims what claims they make and what we're only, I mean, honestly, all we're doing is holding them to their claims. So they're making certain claims and we're testing those claims to see if they're true or not. It's very common, like um, Haidar said, to believe that there's only one Quran. Just like the comment says, there's only one Quran and it's authentically written in Arabic. So that's what Muslims are taught. And we're going to see this video, what Muslim scholars and Muslim preachers, the evangelists of the Muslims, the, the Da'is, etc., what they say. And what we're going to hope to unpack is just unmask this lie, uh, Yasser Qadi, in his words, that the standard narrative has holes in it. This is the standard narrative, and that's why we're getting into it. Because we want to show Muslims that they've been lied to, as you said, and that they lie to other people about this topic. And so the point with that is to say that they're that they're in this like deception. We're trying to show them and open, like you know, pray that the Lord opens their eyes to see the truth, and then eventually come to Him. That's our main goal. So yeah, uh, before we yeah, that's I kind of just introductory comments before we get into the video. Okay, thank you very much, brother. So I will put a short video for us to listen and then remember the claims because that's the claim we will be going through throughout the evening. And if you want to get my attention in the chat, please put at sign in front of DCCI Ministries, Hatuntash DCCI Ministries. Hopefully uh, we won't miss it. Uh, let's put the clip on. Quran is absolutely word. Our claim the Muslim claim has been for the last 14 centuries that the Quran is absolutely word by word preserved. I repeat, our claim about the Quran, and we stand by that claim to this day, in 2020, we stand by that claim that in the light of evidence and otherwise, the Quran is preserved word by word, and it can be traced back to the Prophet, وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, word by word. Uh, and frankly, you know, the Quran has been preserved, we believe, since the time of the Prophet till now. Word for word, letter for letter, haraka or vowel sign for vowel sign. There is not a book on the planet Earth in human history that has been preserved like this in its reading, in its articulation, in its pronunciation, in its preservation. There is not a book on the planet Earth which has been preserved like the Quran. So Muslim on planet Earth or elsewhere have no doubt whatsoever that the Quran has been preserved to the letter, to the dot and to the sound when we talk about this. It is amazing. The Muslim Ummah has its fair share of strange ideologies, different sects, different beliefs, different groups. But guess what? All of these groups, no matter what their sect and understanding of Islam is, their Quran is exactly the same. Their Quran is exactly the same. And no group of Muslims around the world believes in another book they call the Quran that is not our book. The Quran shall remain uncorrupted, untouched and unchallenged until the day of judgment. No one shall be able to tamper with the Quran. No one shall be able to bring a false copy of the Quran and the Muslims will be fooled and say it is a false copy. And therefore to this day, the Ummah has never disagreed about its holy book. O oh Muslims, thank Allah for this blessing. Uh, and the Quran, uh, there's only one uh, Quran. There are no various versions or, or whatnot. It's one standard copy of the Quran across the Muslim world. And uh, really there's not been any variant versions of the Quran. The Quran is the Quran for all sects and schisms and groups of Islam. And we also, all Muslims take pride in the fact there is but one Quran. There's no variance of the Quran. If it were the case that right now, at this moment, every single Mus'haf, meaning book or parchment wherein the book, the Quran was um, inscribed, was to disappear right now, overnight, in every single Muslim community, you will have exactly the same book 
with exactly the same letters, with exactly the same vowelings, emerge and be transcribed and be recited out loud amongst every single Muslim community worldwide. That's special. So hash transmission throughout the world has remained preserved to the dots and letters and sounds and vowels. Uh, as we all know, the Quran has been preserved word for word. Today's Musaf, it is exactly the same, word to word, letter to letter. This book, this book, the Quran is Kalamullah, Ghair Makhluq. It is the words of Allah, not a part of the Makhluq. It was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, and preserved word by word, letter by letter, harf by harf. Even the pronunciation is preserved. The Quran that we read is exactly the one that was given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Word for word, letter by letter, surah by surah, the whole Quran. It retains purity Allah promised in the Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun. Surah 15, ayah number 9. Allah says that it is Allah who has revealed this zikr, this message, the Quran. He will protect it. No change, it retains its purity. So, half true is this. You all heard, you all heard. <laughs> Planet Earth or somewhere else. Those of you who joined us on Tuesday evening for the live stream, I, I am guessing as you heard such a phrase, you probably thought about maybe this gentleman is talking about Yajuj and Majuj. <laughs> I don't know. But all I know is from Sheikhs, from Dawa Gangs, from uh, lay Muslims, from Dawa experts, whatever you label them, people claiming that there is only one Quran which has been perfectly preserved, dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. And that goes back to time of Muhammad. That is the general claim, comes from sheikhs, imams, um, dawah gangs, as well as we saw beginning of the live stream, even from lay Muslims. People are in 21st century, where there is Miss YouTube, where there is Sheikh Google. People are seriously making such a claim. I find it's very strange. Um, but it doesn't matter if I find it strange or not. I want us to go back to the time of Muhammad and then see if the companion of Muhammad find that was strange or not. So tonight, in tonight's live stream, we will go back to 7th century according to tradition to see what did early Muslims as well as the companions of Muhammad taught about different Arabic Qurans, if they were any different Arabic Qurans at all. Um, Brother Jai, do you want to uh, bring up anything at this stage? Yeah, just to say that these are the very common claims that are made, not just from Muslim scholars to or Muslim evangelists or preachers, whatever, to a non-Muslim public, but also these are what Muslims teach other Muslims. So it's not just they're trying to tell us as non-Muslims about this, that there's only been one Quran preserved letter for letter, word for word, the exact pronunciation, vowel sign for vowel sign, down to the very dot, the jot or tittle, to use the words of, you know, the, like to allude to what Jesus said. That's what they want. That's what they want to. Uh, that's what they want us to believe. It's not just us, though. They're telling it to their own Muslims. So if you're born into a Muslim family, you're born in a Muslim country, this is something that you're going to be taught from your families, from your Islamic teachers, from people who are teaching you Islam. So the question is that if this is not true, which we're going to demonstrate that it's a complete lie, then if they're going to lie to you about the, the very basic foundational thing in Islam, the Quran, the nature of the Quran, whether it's been preserved or not, then what else are they going to lie to you or have they already lied to you about? So that's kind of just that part, I guess. We and I, I, yeah, I, I, I was laughing too when the guy was saying like Muslims on planet Earth or elsewhere. I, I don't know what world where he thinks this YouTube video is going to be viewed. Maybe, yeah, maybe, um, you know, yeah, Jews and Jews, they have like their satellites or something. I don't know. It could be. He, yeah. They could be watching. He's who we talk about. Ideology by itself, it's all miracle. Um, okay, so let's go at the time of Muhammad, seventh century. And then we will be looking at two Sahih sources, two Hadith. 
where um, in one of the sources, Muhammad's father-in-law, uh, and a Muslim is arguing about the different Qurans, and then Muhammad, we will hear Muhammad's reaction. And then in the second hadith, we will hear Muhammad's reaction to uh, one of his companions, whom he points as the one which Muslim needs to take the Quran from. Uh, how Muhammad reacts to him when uh, he simply get have doubts regarding the revelation or regarding the way Quran is being revealed in many ways. So let me just put the story on the screen and then we take it from there. Um, let's just hide this command. Um, okay. So this is from Sahih Bukhari. Uh, 661, 514, 561, and even the, you, this story is like in many different words, um, many different hadiths. Um, brother, would you like to read it and then we break it down what is happening and then we kind of try to make sense of it? Yeah, uh, that's important to note that this, this hadith has so many different variations and so many different attestations. There's even one scholar who has 11 different accounts of this one hadith. And what you'll see is the story remains similar. The story is in common, but the characters and details change a little bit here and there. So let's read what this one says. It says, narrated by Omar bin Khattab, I heard Hisham bin, 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 I heard Hisham bin, Hakim, bin Hakim saying, reciting Surah Al-Faqan during the lifetime of Allah's Apostle. And I listened to his recitation and noticed that he recited in several different ways, which Allah's Apostle had not taught me. I was about to jump over him during his prayer, but I controlled my temper. And when he had completed his prayer, I put his upper garment around his neck and seized him by it and said, Who taught you this surah, which I heard you reciting? He replied, Allah's Apostle taught it to me. I said, You have told a lie. For Allah's Apostle has taught it to me in a different way from yours. So I dragged him to Allah's Apostle and said to Allah's Apostle, I heard this person restudying Surah Al-Quran in a way which you haven't taught me. On that, Allah's Apostle said, Release him, O Omar. Recite, O Hisham. Then he recited in the same way as I heard him reciting. Then Allah's Apostle said, It was revealed in this way. And added, Recite, O Omar. And I, rec I recited as he taught me. Allah's Apostle then said it was revealed in that way. Uh, sorry, it was revealed in this way. This Quran has been revealed to be recited in seven different ways. So recite of whichever way is easier for you or read as much of it as may be easy for you. Then we have the references there. Yeah. Okay, let me just try to make sense of it. Let me try to make sense of it. Um, so you've got Muhammad's father-in-law, Umar, and then you've got Mr. Muslim called Hisham. Surah 25 is being recited. Umar, Muhammad's father-in-law, is hearing Surah 25 different than how he knew. And then he gets very stressed. Not like in a say, okay, just breathe out and breathe in, I will be fine. But in a stress that he wants to jump over and then got this, get this guy. But well, there is a little bit self-control. He waits until the uh, prayer finish. Soon after that, he drags him to Muhammad. Since there is not very friendly exchange there, okay? Both of them are in front of Muhammad and then says, okay, Mr. Muhammad, we've got this gentleman is reciting Surah 25 is different than you taught me. Which one is correct one? Muhammad hears the both of them. And then Muhammad simply says, yeah, both of them are fine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter which, which way you recite, whatever is easier for you. At this stage, Muhammad's father-in-law doesn't even know Quran is coming down in many different versions in a sense that it is causing him stress, okay? Hisham doesn't know that either. 
So by this stage, like Muhammad didn't tell anyone. Oh, by the way, I'm teaching the Quran in many different ways to people. People are just like figuring this out as they hear the recitation. But it's not like um, pronunciation is different. It recitation is like so different that one Mr. Muslim wants to drug other Mr. Muslim. He wants to jump over. But what he does is he put his upper garment around his neck and seized him by it. I see a problem. I see a problem at the time of Muhammad. There were minimum of two versions of Surah 25 was out there. And they were so different. Muhammad's father-in-law drugged someone else. Like in, in the past, I've been, um, see, uh, what is that? Like someone grabbed my scarf once and then they pulled me down with like pu pulling my scarf down. It is very, very painful. Like you can't, you can't breathe. It's so like stressful. And then this is what Umar does. He put his upper garment around his neck and seized him. If differences were very simple, I think they would just put, link their hang, uh, arms together and then they would go to Muhammad to discuss. At this stage, all I am reading into the hadith is differences were causing pretty big damages. And then they turned to Muhammad and then Muhammad first time telling people, yeah, both ways are the same. Whatever is easier for you, just go for it. What do you think, brother? What are your thoughts? Uh, what I, I think is that this hadith is a huge mess for Muslims and there's a scholar who writes on these topics by the name Shali Nasser and how he describes this is the chicken or the egg, which came first, the chicken or the egg. He says, which came first, the hadith about the ahruf or variants? So did the hadith come first and therefore that justifies there being these variants of the Quran or were there variants and then like many other Muslim doctrines throughout history, which we can, which we can prove false hadiths were made up to justify certain positions and certain doctrines. So which one came first? He's of the position that the variants came and then this came after to justify the fact that there are these different versions of the Quran during Muhammad's lifetime. And you might be thinking, Oh, Muslims have a justification here in saying that Muhammad sanctioned these other readings of the Quran or these different variations of the Quran, these different Qurans. So you might be thinking, someone made a comment about the 37 Qurans that we have access to today. You might be thinking of like Hafs, Warish, etc. What Muslim scholars do agree on about what Ahruf are, because as you can see on the screen here, it says Ahruf. The reason why that, that's not translated is because there's not a one-to-one -one translation for this in English because nobody knows what it means even in Arabic. So a hyper-literal translation of ahruf is, it's the plural of the word harf, which means letter. So a very hyper-literal translation means letters, but everybody agrees that it doesn't mean letters here. It's not talking about seven letters. That's not the seven ahruf, it's not seven letters. There are over 40 opinions as to what ahruf means but one thing that all Muslims agree on, all Muslim scholars, I have to really preference that, Muslim scholars, not Muslims, but Muslim scholars, what they agree on is that the ahruf are not the same thing as the differences that you see in Warsh, Hafs, all of these different Qurans that we're used to seeing. People were posting about them in the chat earlier. These are not the same thing as ahruf. Uh, we have it on the screen here. Thank you, sister. So, yeah, so... No one knows what ahruf is. And then we have the whole slide it's, here. It's, so it's not only no one knows. Um, Yasir Kadi in his book says, <laughs> true meaning of ahruf only known to Allah. Exactly. So, apparently Allah only knows what is that, what was happening with Surah 25, which was causing Muslims to have problem. Right. And he also says, same guy, Yashim Qadi, the same one, he says that this is the most difficult, most confusing topic. 
And that ever since the very inception of this, the very beginning of this topic in Islamic history, it caused doubts in the very first of Muslims. The, the very first of Muslims who heard this, it caused doubts. So I see you have Yasser Qadi here, uh, studying from his book. Yeah. And full it's quotation. on page 175. Yeah. Yeah. So full quotation, he simply says, well, no one knows what Ahuf is, only Allah knows. So right. Muslim, Muslim. Check this out, though. He says, Al Sayyuti listed over 40 opinions. Yeah. <laughs> over 40 opinions. So imagine the reason why we see this word just a h r u f ahruf the reason why we, we see that just like transliterated into english is because nobody knows what it means al sayuti has 40 opinions for what it means so this is a huge yeah. problem for muslims because if they're going to appeal to this hadith to justify the fact that there are different qurans that exist today then they need to tell us okay what does ahruf mean what are these different ahruf and they can't tell us what we do know is that it, under the general umbrella or category of variations or variant Qurans, you can put ahruf under there. But it's not the same thing as the different readings or qira'at. It's not the same thing as that. So I just wanted to really just stress that point uh, just for everybody. Yeah, so we are not talking about Hafs Quran or Wash Quran. We are talking about something else which apparently only Allah knows what it means uh, from the time of Muhammad okay right so that's not like there's not there was another point that I saw sorry sister go ahead there was a little lag no no go on brother oh, okay there is a little lag sorry about that uh so another point is that Muslims will often say and I noticed that this was on the slide it was on the bottom that they'll often say that this is different dialects but Omar and Hisham are from the same tribe, the Quraysh tribe. And we're going to get into this hadith a little later on. But when the Quran was burnt in mass, many different Qurans were burnt in mass. What was commanded was to write in the language, singular, the language of the Quraysh. So the Quraysh only had one dialect. They only had one language, one dialect in Arabic. So the fact that you had Hisham, who's Qureshi, and 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 Omar, who's Qureshi, that means that they both speak the same dialect. So the differences between the two couldn't have been dialectical. It couldn't have been different dialects. Uh, so so it, just wanted to point that out. Yeah, it is the same dialect, and also uh, remember from the hadith which we read, we are talking about adults, not children, are just like not hearing well or anything. Two adults, one of them is the father in law of Muhammad. And then another Muslim are reciting Surah 25 from the same tribe. And they're reciting differently from one another. It is that different causing another Muslim to feel, okay, I want to get rid of this guy. What should we do? He's like thinking, he puts his like he puts his garment around him. And drags him to Muhammad. So that kind of just right. itself speaks a pretty violent and pretty disturbing event is taking place. Um, yeah. And then also, if, like, let's say, sake of the argument, if they are Ahruf, um, it is helpful for us to remember, according to the Islamic tradition, that Ahruf, whatever, like, that there is a story which tells us it has been revealed in seven Ahruf. There are seven ahrufs. Whatever that was, Uthman got rid of that with, within like um, around 650 years, um, approximately 20 years after the death of Muhammad. That's ve something very different than um, very different than what was happening at the time of Muhammad. So while Muhammad tells people it is is whatever is easier for you recite, even though same surah is different from one another. Uthman steps in and then simply uh, says, no, we will stick with we will stick with one. Exactly. So right away, the claims of the Muslims that we played earlier, from the scholars to the layman Muslim to the evangelist, the Dai missionary Muslim, have been 
already destroyed by their own tradition. This is not us. We didn't write al-Bukhari. We didn't write these texts. We didn't write Yasser Qadi's book. These are from their own. Yasser Qadi is refuting himself, actually. <laughs> so he does that quite often. But what we see here is that there's not a difference in dialect. There's a difference in wording. We don't know exactly what the difference was, but there's a difference in wording to the point where, as you said, he got violent. Omar got violent with Hashem. And, you know, he had enough patience to wait till he was done praying, but he still got violent with him, grabbed him by the neck. And, you know, you, you get the imagery there that he was very upset with him. So there weren't the same Quran. It wasn't letter for letter, dot for dot, vowel sign for vowel sign, pronunciation for pronunciation. It wasn't that. So this one source, this one reference already destroys this myth that the Muslims propagate not just to non-Muslims, because a lot of people convert to Islam thinking that this is a valid point, that this is a point to convert to Islam on. Oh, the Quran, you're telling me the Quran has been the same preserved by the time of Muhammad till the time of today, that if I go from America to China to the UK to the Sudan, anywhere in the world, that it's the same Quran, no matter where I go, and it hasn't changed since the time of Muhammad, some people think that that's compelling enough to convert to Islam. There's actually a couple of popular Muslim YouTubers who converted to Islam for that very reason, or one that I have in mind. So this is a point that Muslims propagate to non-Muslims to try to convert them, and it's a point that they tell each other as well. And it's already been debunked by their own sources. But of course, we're not going to stop there. So according to their own sources, at the time of Muhammad, people, individuals who are speaking the same tribal language, who are adult, they are, both of them are taking the Quran from Muhammad, yet they are receiving the Quran in many different ways, which is causing troubles. Exactly. So, and like I said, this hadith exists in many different forms, many different variations. And it's very funny because that's exactly how the Quran exists as well and many different forms and many different variations. So just like how the Hadith was preserved by the same story kind of content, sim sometimes similar content, but then there's also contradictory points as well. Like we'll see in our later series, our later episodes, our later streams on this, that there are contradictions between the different Qurans. The point is that the Quran has been preserved in a very similar way to the Hadith where they have the same story but many different details, characters change here and there. But then there's very serious differences when it comes to the Quran, because obviously Muslims are uh, basing a lot more on the Quran than they are in Hadith. Um, I, I noticed there are some Muslims in the chat um, who were uh, who've been in the chat since the beginning. I think this is great opportunity for you to uh, come up with the arguments. Uh, like I know. Um, I, this week I noticed um, the best argument Muslims can come to debunk people is just like calling Mr. Policeman. But um, can you be double kind enough and then just like please come up with some arguments? How would you respond this story, which is on the screen, put together by Sahih Bukhari, where it has been expressed Surah 25, where it was in different for different version from one another, from the two reciters. Which one end up in our current Quran? Is it Umar's version in the current Quran or is it Hisham's version in the current Quran? We would like to know who made that decision. Um, so exactly. like, um, I know um, it can be difficult after the certain age to learn new things, but uh, it's never late. So at this stage, you can be double kind um, and practice kindness uh, by simply develop some arguments how to respond. So it will be very, very helpful. And hopefully your argument is like about what we are discussing. Yeah, Saying there is and, only uh, one just like doesn't have <laughs> like yeah. just... Our friend um, Haidar here is, is, is just claiming over and over again that there's only one, there's only one. You're contradicting what Muhammad himself said in this hadith. Muhammad said that it came in different ahruf. Whatever ahruf means, it came in different ahruf, which means that there's not just one, there are many. So when you say there's only one, you're saying that Muhammad was wrong. 
And this is just the very, very beginning. We're just scratching the surface here. Hi, Dad, if you stick around with us, I guarantee you, if you're honest and if you really value the truth, you're going to ditch this idea completely, abandon this idea completely that there's only one Quran. And then we hope, we hope by the, by the end of it, that you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the only truth. Amen. So what we are doing is right now looking at many different Qurans at the time of Muhammad. And then in the coming weeks, we will be looking at many different Qurans, how they contradict one another in today's world. Okay, so that's what we are focusing. Um, so we looked at the story of Umar, uh, who is the father-in-law of Muhammad, first time, bless his heart, first time he hears that. There are different Qurans are coming down, one surah is coming in many different forms and versions. And then also, I want to bring our attention to Ubay bin Kaab, um, where Ubay bin Kaab actually uh, been similar, part of the similar story, and we want to see how Muhammad dealt with it. Ubay bin Kaab is not someone who you picked up on the street or by the beach. Uh, Ubay bin Kaab is the someone whom Muhammad pointed people to take the Quran from. So, exactly. And also one of Muhammad's like scribes. Guy. Yeah, he's supposed to be a good guy, okay? I know you didn't take his Quran, all those kind of things, but overall in Islam, he is a good guy. Um, beloved of Christ, would you be kind enough and then read this story for us? So it is definitely. coming in from Sahih Hadith. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. So again, we're going to see again the another variation of this story, this time with Ubay. So it starts by saying, Ubay bin Qalab reported, I was in the mosque when a man entered and prayed and recited the Quran in a style which to which I objected. Then another man entered the mosque and recited in a style different from that of his companion. When we had finished the prayer, we all went to we all went to the messenger and said to him, the man recited in a style to which I objected, and the other entered and recited in a style different from that of his companion. Okay, then it goes on. It says that the Messenger of Allah asked them to recite, and so they recited. And the Apostle of Allah expressed approval of their affairs. It says their modes of recitation. And there occurred in my mind a sort of denial, doubt, shek, doubt, which did not occur even during the days of ignorance. When the Messenger of Allah saw how I was affected this says by a wrong idea, but that's not in the Arabic. He struck my chest, whereupon I broke into sweating and felt as though I were looking at Allah with fear. He said to me, Ubay, a message was sent to me to recite the Quran in one. They're translating Ahruf and Harf as dialect here. So we'll just read their translation, but it doesn't actually mean dialect. Uh, to recite the Quran in one dialect, I replied, make things easy for my people. It was conveyed to me for the second time that it should be recited in two dialects. I again replied to him, make affairs easy for my people. It was conveyed to me for a third time to recite in seven ahruf. Seven, and they're translating as dialects, which is wrong, but seven ahruf. And I was further told, you have got a seeking for every reply that I sent to you which you should seek from me. I said, O oh Allah, forgive my people, forgive my people. And I have deferred the third one for the day on which the entire creation will turn to me, including Ibrahim, Abraham, for intercession. And then there's the reference there on the screen. Thank you very much uh, for reading, brother. So let me just summarize what I heard, what has been read. Three individuals are in the mosque. Quran is being recited, and those three individuals are disagreeing with one another. One of the individuals, Ubay bin Kaab, the one whom you take the Quran from. Four people, Ubay bin Kaab is the one you take the Quran from. Okay? Three of those people turns up to Muhammad, and then Ubay kind of summarizes the story. Everyone is reciting this Quran different. What is happening? Help us, help us. Muhammad simply says, 
It's okay. It's okay. Just calm down. It's revealed to me in many different ways. So a companion of Muhammad, whom Muhammad points people to take the Quran from, didn't even know at this stage Quran is been coming down in many different ways. Okay, first time he he's hearing this. First time he's hearing this. But not only is that I heard this, he expresses it occurred in my mind such a doubt which didn't even I had in the time of Jahiliya. So now I am I am with Muhammad, I am learning the Quran from Muhammad. It seems Muhammad is teaching the Quran to the people in many different ways. Right now we've got three different versions of the Quran here. And then respond I get from Muhammad is it's okay, it is revealed in many different ways. And that when my faith shows, I am not satisfied by the response you give me because it caused me to have doubt. What happens? Muhammad strike him in his chest, which caused him to sweat. So which means like it was a pretty painful strike. Comes from the man of pieces. Problem, Brother Jai, what is your problem with this hadith? Because well, Muslims are tired, yeah. Muslims told us at the beginning, word by word, letter by letter, sound by sound, dot by dot, it is exactly the same from time of Muhammad. But right now I'm just thinking, is it exactly the same with Utma, Ubay bin Kaab's recitation? Is it exactly the same with other two individuals, other two Mr. Muslims? Is it exactly the same with Hisham or Umar, who is virgin, is this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, like so. This are at the t this is the time of Muhammad. This we're not waiting like hundreds and hundreds of years later when we see these different Qurans popping up, right? This is in the time of Muhammad where we have companions reciting it in different ways. And like like you mentioned, Sister Ubay is not someone to just overlook. He's someone that Muhammad said to learn the Quran from. That he's the this guy's like the master of the Quran. That's what Yashar Qadi says. He's the the master of the Quran. He's a scribe of Muhammad, one of his scribes. And we're gonna get into how some of Muhammad's scribes actually left Islam because of this uh, topic and other things. But we'll get into that. So what we see here is we have one of Muhammad's scribes, one of the ones who he says to learn the Quran from. Someone who Yasser Qadi says is the master of the Quran. He had no idea that there was such a thing called Ahruf. All this time he spent with Muhammad, he had no idea that there were... <laughs> Imagine you're spending all this time with the guy. You'd think that you'd know that there's something called Ahruf and that there's all these differences. But this caused him doubt. As you said, it caused him doubts. More doubt that he had than even during the times he wasn't even a Muslim. So this is insane level of doubt. This is like a crazy level of doubt. He's in such shock right now to the point where he started to visibly show his doubt. So what did Muhammad do? Let's do a quick contrast, uh, sister. Okay. There's th the Apostle Thomas where he said he needs to see the risen lord he wants to see him he wants to know like i want to be able to see him i want to be able to touch him what did jesus do jesus stuck out his hands and he let him touch he's let he's letting he's not striking him in the chest like muhammad strikes people in chests who have doubts or have questions he's actually answering the questions and he's saying yes i am risen here's my scars here are my hands look at them look at me i rose from the dead that's what jesus is saying look what muhammad does muhammad punches this guy he strikes him in the chest and then the guy starts freaking out he's sweating bullets and he says that he, he's as if he's looking with god in the face <laughs> he has so much fear it's as if he's looking at god so muhammad i mean this guy who would like behead people for writing poetry about him or thinking bad thoughts about him obai knows what type of person muhammad is so he sees him doubting He's sweating bullets. He's thinking, what am I going to do? He's looking right at me. He sees that I'm doubting. What am I going to do? And then it says, I felt like I was looking at to Allah with all this fear. So 
that's where he kind of has to end the doubt. He has to be, he has to stop being so vocal about it and try to kind of cover himself. You know, that's kind of implied because he's right in front of this guy who's probably going to kill him if, you know, he's, or he's going to be on a kill list or something like that if he were to leave his slum. So what happens? What happens here, as you said, sister, is that this hadith just completely refutes the idea that there's only one Quran and there's only been one Quran since the time of Muhammad. You have one person resetting it like this, someone else resetting it like that. Muhammad is saying, oh yeah, I taught it in that way and I taught it in that way. Both ways, all these ways, all, all, all these ways. Guess what? There's actually seven different ways. <laughs> and to this day, Muslims have no idea what these seven ways are. So as Yasser Qadi says, this question of variations in the Quran, many Qurans, has caused doubt since the very beginning. And he is talking about the story with Ubay. This caused him to doubt Islam. From the very beginning. From exactly. The very beginning. So, while, um, as we showed a short video in the beginning, where 21st century Muslims are making a claim that. Quran is dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. It's exactly the same, um, which goes to the, from the time of Muhammad to today. We met with individuals at the time of Muhammad. One of them is his father-in-law. Muhammad didn't even tell his father-in-law that Quran is coming down in many different ways. Muhammad didn't even tell the one whom Muhammad says, oh, he's, this guy is a good guy, learn the Quran from. He didn't even tell him that Quran is coming down in many different ways. So while today's Muslims are stating, oh, Quran ex goes back to the Muhammad exactly how it was. When we go to the time of Muhammad, what we see is actually there were many different Qurans and today it is difficult to figure out which version of Surah 25 is end up in the current Quran? It is all problem. It is all problem alongside it is all false claim. And it is not like I am saying this is false claim. I'm just pointing people to Ubay bin Kaab and Umar. And they are telling us. And they are not ashamed of that because it ends up in Sahih Hadiths. Bukhari is not ashamed of to share that information with people. Sahih Muslim is not ashamed of sharing such information with people because they know, well, Quran is different, so we've got to deal with it. And then in coming weeks, when we look at actually how those differences were even causing people to call one another disbeliever was already a problem as well. So we will be kind of digging into those as well. But so far, if I am right, brother, please, if I am not correct me, that right now we saw in one story there are minimum two people who who have different version of the surah. And in the second story, there are minimum three people who disagrees regarding what version of that Quran was. Yes, and it just gets worse and worse. And, and again... People might wonder, I, I've heard people question us on this. Like, why are you guys doing this? Are you trying to compare to Bible preservation? Or what's the goal? What's the purpose? We're literally just responding to what the Muslims say. That's it. We're responding to what Muslims say. We're responding to what the popular Muslims say. We're responding to what the scholar Muslims say. We're responding to what the lay Muslim says. We're responding to what the missionary, the Da'i Muslim says. That's what we are. That's what we're referring to. That's what we're responding to. Sorry. That's what we are responding to. So that's, yeah, so, so just to kind of, uh, I guess, just kind of wrap up with that. Um, we're responding to specific claims that Muslims make, and we're showing them from their own sources that this is completely a myth, that the standard narrative has holes in it, just like uh, Yasser Qadi says. Yeah, let, let me just jump in to emphasize the point you which made earlier. You said you are even aware of, famous Muslim missionaries who are expressing that they become a Muslim and they stuck in Islam because they believe Quran has been perfectly preserved exactly. from Muhammad to today. But 
all I did, all we did is just simply go to the Islamic sources, and we will we will have other stories which is going to give us worse version of um, uh, what was happening in seventh in time of Muhammad regarding the different Qurans. But today today's Muslims are apparently stuck in Islam, simply thinking, yeah, it is exactly the same what Allah revealed to Muhammad. Um, Islam. Islam disagrees with that. Yeah, and I feel like we're going to be citing this a lot from Yasser Qadi. Maybe we should rename the series to something like Holes in the Narrative or something like that because that's what comes up all the time. And so I, I just want to, I referenced this earlier uh, from the Bible. I want to read from the Gospel of John chapter 20. And I want to show the contrast here between how Muhammad dealt with people who doubted him by striking them in the chest, the chest and putting the fear of God in them or the fear of the false Allah in them and making them fear for their lives. They're sweating bullets because they're so afraid to show doubt in front of Muhammad. They're so afraid to show doubt in front of them. I want to contrast that. And instead of holes in the narrative that are lies that are told by the Muslims, these are the holes that save. What holes are the ones that save? Starting in verse 26, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put your hand and put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Thomas was actually able to touch the holes that save, the holes that bring salvation, the nails that went through the flesh of the Lord Jesus, God incarnate. Those holes are the ones that save. Jesus said to him, after being called my Lord and my God, he said, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So Jesus affirms that he is Lord. He is God. This is how Jesus dealt with people who had questions, who had doubts. Muhammad, he struck fear in them. Other people, he killed them. Muhammad, Islam, those are the holes that bring damnation. Those are the holes that bring slavery to Satan, to sin. But the holes that save are the holes in the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus. And in the side. He said to put his hand on the side. So those are the holes. And that's our main, main, main focus as Christians. To spread the gospel. To spread the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in doing that, the Lord calls us to expose falsehood. And this is one of the biggest falsehoods, the biggest lies that Islam spreads, that there's only one Quran. No, there's not just one Quran. There are many, many Qurans that contradict each other. There are many issues that we're going to get into in the coming weeks, Lord willing. And we invite all the Muslims to stay with us, to keep watching with us, and to really think about these issues and to pray to the true God about the truth. And if you're willing to follow the truth, no matter the cost, no matter the consequences, we pray that God gives you the bravery and God gives you the strength to follow the truth where it leads. And it leads right to Jesus because Jesus said, John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So thank you so much, Sister Atun. Uh, I always love and enjoy doing streams with you. It's really exciting. Uh, so thank you so much, Sister. Pass it over thank to you. you. Thank you very much for joining me, brother. And um, I believe uh, Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari made its point that at the time of Muhammad, peace is for his happy and child protection be upon him, in his time, there were different Qurans which was causing Muslims to have doubt and they got struck. And I believe now, even though Muslims are 
still going into the cameras and then telling us or in coming into the live stream chats and then telling us there is only one Quran. I strongly believe Islamic sources itself tells them they are lying, they are misrepresenting their own ideology. And it is just wrong. It is just wrong by itself. So um, that was the summary of our live stream for tonight. Thank you very much, everyone who joined us. Um, feel free to use those um, resources and then ask your Muslim um, friends about those very basic questions, which will um, challenge the foundation of the Islam um, when it comes to the preservation of the Quran. Remember the claim which Muslim missionaries, Muslim scholars makes that um, Quran has been perfectly preserved dot, dot by dot, word by word, letter by letter, sound by sound from time of Muhammad to today. And I still, it's been like end of live stream now. We've been like almost an hour and I still don't know actually uh, uh, how, like minimum, there are minimum five versions of the um, Quran revealed so far from the two stories which we read. I really don't know which was in, in heavenly tablets. I really don't know which one Muhammad said, yep, use this one. And we will see, actually, we don't even have the Quran of Muhammad in coming episodes. So um, thank you very much, everyone who joined us. Thank you very much to all moderators for serving us. By God's grace, we will see you on another live stream or at Speaker's Corner or at the bosom of the Father, wherever f first comes. And may Christ crucified silently with his love.